This is KGW News at Sunrise. Clark County Sheriff's deputies arrested a man who's accused of several drive-by shootings overnight. We're going to have the details on those shootings. We'll also let you know what deputies found inside the man's car coming up here in one of our top local stories. And there is a controversial proposal to add junior ROTC programs to Portland Public Schools. Ahead, we'll hear from people who are for and against the idea. Plus. It is a staple. And you just feel special when you walk in. Where are we talking about? Where is this? This is Northeast Portland. This is Helen Bernhardt Bakery. Mm -hmm. This year, by the way, Helen Bernhardt Bakery celebrating 100 years. So we're going to celebrate with them this morning. Live looks from inside the bakery. Oh, don't stop there. Don't pause <laughs> there. We'll have more from the bakery coming up a little bit later here on Sunrise. I mean, the bell was nice, whatever that was. <laughs> you went the apple we fritter. didn't have to yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're here with us on this Wednesday. Yeah, some sweet stuff coming up and some sunshine, right? Yeah. Uh, everybody do it. What are you doing? Some, some sunshine. sunshine. Come on, Chris. Chris, come no. on. Oh, oh there you are. Do whatever you want. We're not showing it. <laughs> All right, this is a downer because we go from the sunshine excitement to the frost advisory map, uh, a signal that it's chilly out there this morning. Notice this is elevations over the coast range and then a good chunk of Clark County and the parts of uh, Callis County. It does include you folks up in Ridgefield. We've seen temperatures on battleground close to freezing. Yeah, right there at 34 degrees, 35 in Gresham. So 38, 36 in Hillsboro, 38 in Beaverton. So it's a chilly start, but there's no wind out there to speak of uh, being reported in most areas. Sheridan is now down to 33. So uh, again, a reminder that depending on where you live, we're not quite out of frost season yet. 41, uh, quite a bit warmer out at the airport right now. 58 degrees at noon. The sun should do its thing. I have us getting all the way up to 70. Yesterday it was 65. Here is Chris. Looks awesome. All right, the morning drive off to a pretty good start as well. Just a couple of cars making their way down the Sylvan Hill on Highway 26. This is I-5 near the Twilliger Curves. That's the on-ramp from Twilliger Boulevard. And you can see again, just uh, one or two cars there as well. The drive over the Glen Jackson Bridge in pretty good shape. So freeways look fine. A reminder for TriMet riders on the blue line, the east end of the blue line. Uh, TriMet continuing to do that track repair work uh, on the east end of this, the uh, line. So they're still using shuttle buses uh, today and through Saturday uh, to serve the stops between 172nd and Cleveland Station. Again, that should wrap up uh, for the start of service on Sunday morning, guys. All right, we'll have more from Chris and Rod coming up later this half hour. We start our news headlines this half hour, though, in Clark County, where deputies arrested a man in connection with a series of drive by shootings. He's in jail this morning and is scheduled to appear in court later today. The shootings happened in the middle of the night and damaged property. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Alma McCarty has the details. Around 1.30 Tuesday morning. Somebody came and shot the building. Adventist Community Church in Clark County became the first of several crime scenes. What we realize is that um, this world has a lot of chaos in it. Lead pastor Roger Walter explains bullets pierce the windows and doors. Yeah, it's it's powerful enough to do the damage they wanted to do. And deputies discovered numerous 9 millimeter casings scattered across the parking lot. We believe that Jesus is going to see us through whatever crisis, and we're just thankful it was at, at night. Three miles away and less than 30 minutes minutes after that shooting. You know, I thought probably it was firecracker or something, but it wasn't. A similar scene at Kessid Columbia Church. Ray Belial says the sounds woke him from his sleep. I says, what is going on? So, you know, I got, got up, turned on the lights, and, and just walked outside. And then when I turned around, they went pop, 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 pop again. Investigators collecting evidence at both scenes heard more shots and zeroed in on this Toyota Highlander, spotted speeding and driving recklessly on nearby streets. From there, deputies connected the SUV to a suspect and the suspect to a particular type of gun. One they say they found a few hours later on the driver's seat floorboard of the suspect's car after the sheriff's office used spike strips to stop it on I-5. Deputies also found multiple loose 9mm rounds in the front seats and say the suspect was also wearing body armor under a jacket with several magazines on it. The chaos of the early morning hours ending in an arrest of 23-year-old Alexi Sutterin. It's upsetting and shocking, and, and yet at the same time, um, we're glad that the guys got caught. Alma McCarty, KGW News.
Gresham police are looking for a group of teens caught on camera harassing a man before one of them is shown knocking him unconscious. A warning, the video may be hard for some people to watch. Surveillance video shows what appears to be a teenager, you saw it there, hitting a 58-year-old Terry Poulter in the back of the head with a skateboard. It happened around 5.30 Sunday evening off Northeast 2nd and Roberts Avenue, right outside of Discounts Plus and a bar. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. It's unclear what led up to the attack, and some business owners in the area say that situation is troubling. It made my stomach sick. Somebody that could actually hit a human being over the head with a skateboard. Well, I think that's horrible, what's going on. Um, and I think people need to be held accountable uh, for their actions. Police say they've notified the Gresham Barlow School District just in case the suspects our students. Portland Public Schools is considering a proposal that would let schools in the district add junior ROTC programs. So those are military programs that the Army says teach students the values of citizenship and service. But there are some people against this idea who say the programs push kids towards careers in the military and have no business in public schools. It gives kids like that a something to strive for. JROTC claims not to be about recruitment, but it's absolutely about recruitment. There are also questions about how the district would support these programs and how exactly they would be funded. All right, let's talk about college students at Oregon State because tuition is going up there. That's according to OSU's Board of Trustees, which just approved tuition hikes for next year. So returning undergrads will see a roughly 5% increase. Student fees for on-campus health, counseling, psychological services, and recreational facilities are also going up. The school does say it's going to try to offset some of these costs by increasing the amount of university-funded financial aid. Washington State University needs your help naming their newest variety of apple. For more than 20 years, the apple has gone by the name WA64. Not super catchy, right? So the university <laughs> is holding a contest for name suggestions. They say the apple's a hybrid of a honey crisp and a crisp hmm. pink apple. It's described as pink hued, firmly crisp, sweet, tart. You can find the submission form at wsu.edu slash WA64 contest. That's not catchy either. Uh, that's not catchy yeah. either. <laughs> Anyone 18 and older can make a submission up until May 5th. So Sunrise apple. <laughs> what do you think? Sunrise. It's, I like yeah, it. Yeah, that's I nice. Like it, Rod. I like it. Uh, you know, I grew up on the East Coast. You grew up in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah. Some 20 so years ago, we both moved out here. When I came here, I thought there were like three types of apples in the world. That's it. Oh, my goodness. When we grew up getting the red delicious, that <laughs> yeah. was it. They're like 49 cents a pound back then. That's what we had in our house mm. every time. I realized later they're not that good. <laughs> Good, those red delicious. <laughs> yeah, not my fave. And I will tell you, when I go back home and my, you know, folks get apples at the grocery store, they are mushy, mushy. Oh, and no. Mushy, the ones mushy, here. mushy. Yeah, they're not, they're not fresh. No. Oh. You can tell that, that uh, they didn't come from Missouri. We've they're been spoiled. By the time they get there, yeah. <laughs> all right, here's a look at our uh, satellite picture. Today's all about the sun. We will have the sun right from the get go. Weak system out here is our next rain chance, and that could arrive as early as tomorrow evening for the valley or more like overnight into Friday morning. But right now you can see it's quiet in Oregon, Washington. Again, everybody's forecast basically is mostly sunny. Maybe a little strip of high cloudiness from time to time. That's about it. So the bricks are dry this morning. Uh, it's cool outside. The airport now is down to 41 degrees. Remember, we have a frost advisory for parts of the region and uh, temperatures are near freezing in some spots. There's Kelso up at the airport in College County, 34. Over in Astoria, it's 36. Down in Salem, it's 37. So, you know, um, for Portland, the average final freeze is around April 1st. So for the city center, we're probably through that. Mid-April to, to May 1st is the two-week stretch where we start to see our final freezing temperatures on any given spring. Um, in the rest of the valley. And by the time you get to May 1, any freezing temperatures beyond that point are quite rare. But we're not totally out of the frost season yet. And again, 34 up in Kelso right now. 30 over in Bend. Of course, you folks have a ways to go before you'll stop seeing freezing temperatures. Futurecast shows a little bit of high cloudiness, but basically it's a beautiful sunny day. I want to go ahead and play it into tomorrow afternoon. This shows 3 o'clock, the first chance of rain up in Astoria. And then that band coming in tomorrow evening at 9 o'clock. Now, other modeling says 
This would be closer to midnight or after before we would see some raindrops. But during the daylight hours tomorrow up and down I-5, we should stay dry with increasing clouds and we have rain going into a Friday morning. Forecast numbers for today, even at the coast, it's all about the sun. Pacific City 57, northwest winds 5 to 15. Should be a really nice day at the coast. And here in the valley, despite that chilly start, big warm up coming. I have mid to upper 60s, McMinnville 68 degrees, north winds 5 to 10. I do like Portland and Vancouver's chances of hitting 70. Yesterday it was 65 degrees, so we'll see if we make 70 today. North winds 5 to 10. The record today I think is 79. Um, and then tomorrow the increase in clouds. Still a nice day, mid-60s. The showers Thursday night into Friday. And the weekend, which was looking better yesterday than Monday, looks better today than it did on Tuesday. So how about no rain chance at all now? Saturday and Sunday, I have both days in the mid-60s. Some of the weather modeling goes warmer than I am, so I would prepare for some nice weather. If you need to prepare for nice weather, do what you have to do. Here's China. <laughs> Consider me prepared, Rod. All right, you can never go wrong with a sweet treat in the morning. Photographer Eric Patterson is out live at Helen Bernhard Bakery, where they are celebrating 100 years of business. More on their recipe for success coming up in just two minutes.